want to first tell you, for those of you who don't know, is there is a new program, PhD training program, that is getting off the ground here at Boston University. And I'm here to first tell you about it. And after I've told you about it, uh, we're going to invite a couple of faculty, namely uh, uh, Tim Heron and David Rosenblum, to join me to uh, answer a lot of questions that you may have. Now, who is you? You are perhaps students who might be interested in moving in this direction. And you might be faculty who might want to be involved in this type of training and encourage your student to enter into this program. So this program has a, a formal name, the Transformative Training Program in Addiction Science. And we were fortunate to be able to put a program together like this because we competed for a large sum of money from the Burroughs Welcome Fund. And the nature of the programs that they fund are exactly this, transdisciplinary. And uh, because of the emergent group of faculty researchers here interested in addiction who have been meeting now for about a year, uh, holding various seminars and, and other meetings, this was perhaps a ripe time to propose something completely out of the box. So um, we developed a program where students who enter this program involved in addiction research will not necessarily every one, but will uh, be using tools from different areas of science that represent from the very basic bench science uh, to uh, more population science and statistics, computational biology, and then of course from some of the clinical areas of, of research, medicine, or behavioral neuroscience. So who is this program for? Well, it's for PhD students, so it's not for master's students not for postdocs, although both can participate in the program activities, <clears throat> but specifically <clears throat> we are looking for students who wish to focus their dissertation training in addiction science. Um, but in addition, we're looking for people like uh, Rick explained who can think on two sides of their brain, being able to look at perspectives that are not inherently uh, followed by most people. We tend to work in silos. People work in the area that they know, and sometimes they may peek out the window, but it's not usual, particularly uh, in PhD training, that you are applying very different approaches and technologies. So this program will emphasize both. Now, the program, um, because of the way the program is structured, we are particularly focused on uh, students who are currently in their first year of a doctoral program here at Boston University. And there are many programs that have already affiliated, and there may be more programs that will in the future. And there are programs that are spread across both campuses, the School of Medicine, the School of Public Health, College of Arts and Sciences, and yes, even the School of Social Work, which has a very strong research program in addiction. So what are some of the key features of this program? Well, we know that people coming in are from so many different areas, and presumably, if you did your college training in a, a life science or uh, 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 you won't know necessarily much about epidemiology or math and may not be exposed to it in your PhD program. So we are assuming that we're going to be uh, like Ellis Island and we're going to be taking the people who are coming from all over and we are going to try to process people through so that eventually talk the same language. So in the beginning, we are uh, planning, uh, it isn't yet uh, 
uh, all worked out yet, but what, what, what might be a one or a two week program where we have faculty from variety of disciplines, both in basic and in human population science, and try to give you a primer uh, so that going forward, you'll be able to uh, 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 actually be able to understand and be able to absorb. Uh, like most PhD programs, we're going to have uh, laboratory rotations. Most students, particularly in the basic sciences, uh, typically do rotations in their first year. So coming into this program, so now we're talking students who are uh, entering their second year as a PhD student, will rotate in at least one additional laboratory and specifically from the transdiscipline. What do I mean by that? If you're a pharmacology student or uh, uh, a genetic student or a molecular medicine student, you might be finding yourself rotating in a laboratory that's focused on epidemiological research or computational research, bioinformatics type research. And conversely, if you're coming from epidemiology or biostatistics or other programs in the School of Public Health or from social work, you might then find yourself rotating through a basic science lab. The goal of this is that students in this program will ultimately have two primary mentors, which is not the typical PhD program. You, you, you rotate through a lab and you identify a mentor who takes you under his or her wing and you do your research with that person, perhaps working with other faculty and other labs, but with primarily one. That's not the case in uh, our program in Tapas where you will have two primary mentors, presumably one of them will be in your home PhD program, and the other will be from a trans discipline. One of the very unique aspects of this program, and which was quite frankly very, very attractive to the sponsor, is the notion of uh, an, an experience with patients. So it's not usual that students who are working with rats or with cells have, uh, you know, who are studying addiction may ever have encountered a person who uh, is addicted to uh, one of the substances and is either going through treatment or going through some other program to deal with their addiction. We are developing what we call a clinical module, uh, and this is going to be, read, be led by uh, uh, Rich Sates, who I see here in the audience, um, who, and we're going to give you an experience in one of several uh, areas within the university, which could include here on this the medical campus, perhaps uh, in the School of Social Work on the Charles River campus, or at the, uh, one of the VA hospitals with uh, uh, clinicians and researchers who are involved with patients so that you will have some experience, some exposure, whether it's in a research setting or as an observer in a clinical setting to see what addiction really is so that when eventually you're doing your research, ultimately you know this is what you're trying to understand and hopefully provide answers for. Like most PhD programs, we're going to uh, create a journal club. Uh, <clears throat> and you know, I can give you more details about what we think about it, but it's a journal club. And ultimately, students from different disciplines will be reading papers in various disciplines and work together. Another unique component to our program, uh, TAPAS program, is what we call a unifying project that will be tackled at the end of the first year in the program. So essentially at the, second, at the end of the second year of a student's experience here at the university. And the, the, the goal here is like an expanded experience in the typical class project. You know, you might have done either in 
grade school or high school or college where you have to work with somebody else and, and, and carry out an assignment. That's going to be the case here where students will work together in teams on a focused project which will involve issues related to both transdisciplines of basic and human or computational science, uh, so an, a project assignment. And there will be some work product, perhaps uh, a paper or uh, something else we haven't yet figured out, um, that will be generated during that summer. Because at some point thereafter, students will be taking a qualifying exam. And we call this an interdisciplinary qualifying exam. So in addition to the qualifying exam that a student has in uh, his or her home program, we don't want to make it too onerous. I mean, you've already gone through the quals. We don't want that to happen, that you're completely flat. It's going to be primarily an oral exam that focuses on the work that you did in your unifying project. Again, the purpose is to make sure you have competency in various disciplines related to addiction science. In terms of courses, don't get uh, 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 overwhelmed by this. At the present time, we are developing one new course in addiction science that's going to span all the different areas. Uh, and we're trying to get that together now. Hopefully, we'll be offered as early as next fall. And students will also be uh, expected to take electives. This is not a hard and fast list, but it's the ones we've identified thus far that if you are a, um, a, 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 an epidemiology or uh, a, a social uh, work student, you would be choosing courses from this list, again, to get the exposure to basic science. And conversely, if you are a pharmacology or <clears throat> a molecular medicine student, you might be choosing one of the courses here. Uh, most of them are primarily in the School of Public Health. What are the benefits of a student who joins this program? Well, there's a monetary benefit right up front, and that is up to two years of um, both tuition and stipend support coming from the training grant. Um, so that will certainly be a relief to you, perhaps, in uh, your home program. Um, this is now following what Rick Myers was talking about. You're going to be trained as a more versatile scientist, which will hopefully translate into more job opportunities uh, thereafter. You could be going through this program, whether you're coming from a basic science focus or a human research uh, or um, population focus, you could find yourself hired in a Pro in a department as a faculty member in epidemiology or pharmacology, for example, because you will have the cachet that makes you attractive to both. Um, additional incentives, uh, we have built into this program an annual monetary prize to support research that might not be covered by your home laboratory. Um, if you want to do work that's beyond the scope a little bit, that's not covered by the grants of the mentors that you're working with, this will perhaps enable you to uh, pursue that, that work. <clears throat> and finally, um, to make sure everyone gets recognized for all the hard work they've done, in addition to your PhD degree that would be conferred upon graduation, uh, we will confer a certificate of training in addiction science. So it's, uh, it's basically two degrees for the price of one. So um, if you want more information about the program, including an application, which is now available online, we have now an up and working website. Um, if you do have questions, you can contact me, that's my email address, or you can contact Tim Heron, who's the co-director, at his email address.